Christmas 25th and we are celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Such a joy in the whole land itself. I was a bit late and the, and the whole Gulf Street is so full. And if you can see the other side of the, of, on the beach, it's so full. No parking, no nothing. And, the, and I was just thinking the song, you know, that we sing often, go tell it on the mountains. I feel we need to go there and sing. You know, it's such a crowd. I was just thinking, if Jesus was there, what he would have been doing there, right? He would be, wherever Jesus was, there was a massive flock, people rallying after him. And there's a massive crowd sitting on the beach. And only if he could go and preach this gospel of Jesus. And, and that's what exactly is my message. And then I was meditating on the word of God. Uh, one John, I just want to tell it before I start. This was coming over. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. What manner of love. The whole uh, few days I was meditating on what to preach about. And about this Christmas, the more you think about, the more about, the, th the more, the, you know, the, the volume of God increases. You cannot comprehend the love of God stepping down to this earth just for us. For your sake and for my sake. What a love. And this word says, 1 John 3, 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. What manner of love. We cannot comprehend that God himself stepping down from eternity into this planet earth. Oh, just to save us. Oh, just to redeem us. Just to take us back to heaven. The price he wanted to pay. It was just amazing. The more I was just thinking about, meditating upon it, I could not, you know, the more amazed I stand at the love of God. What an amazing God we have. And what an amazing Christ that we know. And is it Christmas all about the decorations, right? There are a lot of decorations around the trees, the sweets that's going up across, and the lightings, and wishing one another a Merry Christmas. It's all part of it, right? Because of the joy that bubbles out of our lives. Because we know Christ as our personal savior. We are able to tell all these things. But there are many, as the song goes, go and tell it on the mountains. I believe, uh, let me turn, uh, by my, I turn our Bibles to Luke 2. The portion for today. Let me read it for you. Luke chapter 2. Verse 8 to 14. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. As I was meditating on this word, the very first song that the angels come down. It is not from man. It is not a song from earth. It is a song of heaven. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace. And goodwill towards men. What a glorious gospel. What a glorious truth. The host of angels are coming down. I was just looking and wondering. Oh, you know, the, whenever there are uh, in the angelic visitations, we can specially see in uh, Luke chapter 1 and 2 and Matthew 1 and 2 about the birth of Christ. There are a lot of angelic moments. There are angels coming and visiting Joseph, Mary. Even before that, he, they, the angel visits Zachariah. And there are a lot of visitations happening. And the very first word the angel says, fear not. Right? Fear not. There must be, there must have been, by seeing this angelic appearance, there was such great fear that was coming upon them. And the angel, very the first thing says, fear not. Because, why? Why not to fear? 
And in the first, in verse 10 says, the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you the good tidings. I bring you the glad tidings. What is this glad tidings all about? It is, the angel is saying glad tidings. What is it about? The, the coming of the Lord, the birth of our Lord Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the hope of the nations. Where there is no hope, only hope is found in Christ Jesus. And the world needs hope. The world needs life. The world needs Jesus. And that is the reason why the angel said, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. When you go into the world, you can see so much of depression. There's so much of hopelessness. you right. Have you gone into the world? Have you seen in your offices? Have you seen, have you been speaking to people? There is so much of that. But today, it was 2,000 years ago, the angels came and gave this beautiful message that Christ is born. And there is no need of any more hopelessness. There is no need of no, to be crying and worrying about because our Lord has been born and he's living today. And after 2,000 years plus, I was just thinking about the shepherd's song. And those days, and those shepherds came, and they sang, and suddenly they come with a multitude, and they sing praises to God, and they give the beautiful words, peace on earth, and goodwill towards men. I believe, you know, I was just thinking, why, Lord, why these angels could not come every Christmas and visit us, right? Do you have a thought like that? Do you want angels to come again? I feel the, the, the specific reason why angels had to come and to give this message, it's over. And they have left. And then the other say, and the word says, and, and they left them. And they went, uh, went out. But then, I was thinking, then now, who is going to tell this story of Jesus? Who is going to tell this lovely story of glad tidings to the nations? Who is going to tell that there is joy and peace on earth and goodwill among men? Who is going to tell all this? It's we who we have known Christ. Amen? Do you agree with me, that church? That it is we in this land, in this time, that we are called to proclaim this gospel. We are called to proclaim the glad tidings of Jesus. Jesus came 2,000 years back, right? 2,000 plus and now, and it almost it's, it's, we are waiting for the second coming because of the things that's happening all around. The second coming is so near. And, and we are still singing. We are singing joyfully, yes. We have a reason to sing. We have a reason to celebrate. We have the joy, the untold. You know, we, nobody can take this joy from our lives, right? Paul says, Nothing can separate us from this love of Christ. Nothing can. Because the love of God has been poured out into our lives. And we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Right? And we, as we stand and we proclaim. And that's what when I was driving. And when there, there was such a crowd and there's such a traffic jam that's happening on the Gulf Street right now. Oh, who is going to tell these glad tidings? The glad tidings that we have heard about. The glad tidings that we understood. The glad tidings that we are enjoying. We need to go and tell. And the second coming is so near that we need to go and tell. The, the coming, the, the Lord is here. And there is no need of any kind of a tear. And the, and the very words that the angels said, fear not. When we see the world around us, there's so much of fear, right? The fear, the fear of the future, the fear of everything, the fear, fear, fear. Talk to the students, they are fearful of their exams. Talk to the one who is working, they're fearful of their boss. Fearful of tomorrow, standing at the last, you know, the end of this year. And we are standing on the 25th. And we know we have a hope that never fails. How many of you have that hope? And if you don't have hope, Today is the day when you receive Christ. It's a whole package. You know, it is a whole package. It is not just Christ alone. Christ comes with joy, abundance. And the, and the word says, he came to give us life and life in abundance. Amen? 
and God has gave, God, Jesus came to this earth so that we can have everlasting life and we can have abundant life. What a glory. What more we need, church? What more we need to live a victorious life in Christ Jesus in this earth? We are not called to be somebody, you know, who just go by, you know, by just go through the life, but we can overcome. We can, we can speak life into things. We can speak joy into people's life. We can speak hope into Jesus, people's life because Christ, the hope of glory, is in us. Amen? If you are missing on anything of this, if you feel there is no joy, if you feel there is no hope, if you feel there is no love, you have come to the right place. You have come to the, you, you need to come to Jesus. Oh, it's only found in Jesus. Oh, church can help you out, but it is found in the person named Jesus Christ. Amen? So that is what, that's what I was wondering. 2,000 years plus passed by. Then generation after generation is catching hold of this great Savior. The nation after nation is holding on to this Savior. Why? Because there is hope. Because there is love. Oh, there's nothing in the, out of this world. In this world, you cannot find all this. It is all temporary. The permanent love, the permanent hope, the hope that never fades for this life and the life to come, it is found in Christ Jesus. And today, the most beautiful day, as the whole world is celebrating Christmas, right? The birth of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. What a privilege it is to have, to know, to come to an understanding that we need not worry. Even as the angels met, every, every instance where, if you go and read Matthew 1 and 2, and the, from the book of Luke 1 and 2, you can see wherever, whomever the angels met, the very first word that they, he, they said was, fear not. Are you in fear today of anything? Are you fear, in fear of your future? Are you in fear of your finance and your health? Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer and there is no other answer like Jesus. So I challenge you today to come to this Jesus. If you have any of these problems, if, you, if any of your friends have this problem of fear, come. Let us go to the Lord because our God never leaves nor forsakes us. Amen? Hallelujah. Yeah, as I was looking into these glad tidings, you know, the glad tidings, the joy that comes, even the word glad tidings, I was sitting with that word, glad tidings. As I wanted to give um, uh, a title for my message, I wanted to give glad tidings. I was just thinking, glad tidings. When, when you know, as I told you, when we, when we meet people, when we meet, when we pray for people, we find the misery, the, with the, we find, you know, so much of, hopelessness that things are around them. But when we have glad tidings given by the Lord, why can't we just embrace it? And how can they embrace it without we telling them? Right? The ones we have known, the truth of this great truth. And then, and God gives him the name and, and the angels tell, even to, the, to Joseph, to give him the name Emmanuel. The meaning which comes as God with us. If God is with us, the word says, who can be against us? Right? If the whole world is against us, if Jesus is with you, that is enough. Is it not enough? Do you need anything more than that? And when Jesus was born, that was a time and that was a moment in history when God became one of us. And by that, we can go to him boldly because he lived with us. He had his sitting with us. And I like the way where uh, Spurgeon says something. I just want to read it out to you. It's a wonderful thing that I, uh, I was, as I was meditating on this word, I got it through. I just thought I will share it with... Uh, Charles Spurgeon said once, Christ is a central fact in the world's history. To him, everything looks forward or backward. All the lines of history converge upon him. All the great purposes of God culminate in him. The, great, the greatest and the most momentous fact which the history of the world records is the fact of his birth. 
Oh, what a glorious truth. What a glorious fact. And what a privilege that we are in to know this fact and this truth. Oh, the whole world may be enjoying, may be celebrating without knowing this Jesus. Oh, but the central fact of all is Christ Jesus. And this Jesus, we can just not just oh, putting some, lighting some candles here, putting some decorations there. And this Jesus, we can accept him into our lives. And the day that he was born in the manger, he can be born into our lives. And that's what he's looking forward. Do your hearts, do you want to give your hearts to Jesus today? Do you want, Jesus was born in a manger, right? We all know about that story. But today, where is he? Is he still in the manger? Or is he in your heart? Have you given every space of our hearts to him? The one creator God. And when we read uh, John 1, I was amazed. Oh, the more we read John 1, the more we stand amazed. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was, ma was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. John speaks, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. And we are talking about Jesus, this same God who was in the beginning, who was in Genesis, creating you and me, creating the galaxies, everything that is there in Genesis. And Jesus and the same Jesus is coming down. He is stepping down to this earth only for one reason, for the very reason that Adam lost. Jesus comes so that he can take us back to the Father. He can reconcile us back to the Father, not only through his birth, but through his crucifixion and death and resurrection. What a glorious truth it is today, church, to have this Christ. You know, this truth, as the more we read, I, I was just, Lord, I, it is, you know, it is taking, overwhelming me. Each time I read, it is overwhelming me so much. I just can't say anything, but I want to weep before you, Lord. I just want to stand and, and, and just want to be there in your presence. What a mighty God. The God of the universe stepping down as a human being. Only, not, you know, it was not just a fancy dress, right? We have all done fancy dress in our schools, right? It is not a fancy dress. He came. He paid. The only one reason why he came, the purpose. What was his purpose for coming? Leaving everything of the heaven, leaving the glorious, you know, the one glimpse of heaven has been mentioned in, in the first chapter of uh, where the angels came down. We can see a bit of glimpses in the book of Revelation where, uh, where John says, and Jesus was there and he leaves everything of that he just to come down. For what purpose, church? For what purpose? Matthew 20, 28 says, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. That was the purpose that he was born. For the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. John 3, 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What a glorious thing. Wherever we go in this world, people are there ready to point fingers at us, right? People are there to condemn us. But here, John 3, 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It is not a group of people. It's not a language people. It's not any a tribe. A no, it, is, it is the world. It is from eternity to eternities, from generation to generation till Christ comes. He has done it. He did not condemn the world, but through him might, might be saved. What a glorious truth. This is the reason that Jesus came to this earth. And, and we are celebrating, the whole world is celebrating today the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the reason for his coming was not to condemn you, not to condemn us. Even though we were in sin, he did not come. That's what I read you the first verse from 1 John 3. 
Oh, what manner of love is this? Oh, what manner of love is this? That we cannot understand, Lord. That you came down. You gave yourself. Oh, you were born as in a manger. Oh, thank you, Lord. Does your heart rejoice in this truth of knowing Christ? That there is hope. There is life. That we can be saved. And there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Behold, all things are become new in Christ. What a glorious truth it is to hold on and to live in this world till Christ returns. We are a people of hope, church. We are not a hopeless people. We are a people. There are, if a people in this whole world is there with hope, it is we who know Christ Jesus. It's only the people who know Christ we can be said are hopeful people. And we are the only people who know this truth. And, it is, and we need to go back where the angels came and went away. Singing the greatest song on planet earth. Peace and goodwill among men. And we stand in that gap now to proclaim to the world around us that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he is the savior of the world. He's not enough to be just come once in a week and stand before him and do something and go back. No. He is the one who wants to reside in us. He wants to live in us. He has cleansed us with his precious blood and he has paid the price. Amen. So it's, it's, it's all done. You need not do anything. I was like, as I was meditating on this word, Lord, I, this means, I, you know, every time you read the word, it becomes so fresh again, right? And I was asking, Lord, I need not do anything. I just need to accept. I just need to open my mouth and say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I just need to be there as a surrendered vessel. And he has done it all. He has stepped down from glory. He stepped down from heavens to this earth. And he, did, he finished his race. He did on the cross of Calvary. I like to read Henry G. Bosch wrote, Unless we see the cross overshadowing the cradle, we have lost the real meaning of Christ's birth. Unless we have seen the cross overshadowing the cradle, we cannot separate the manger and the cross. It all goes together. <coughs> yes, we have times of celebration of Christ. But in each in of our individual lives, in every time that we go back to the Lord, we thank the Lord for his coming. We thank for the redemption plan that God had for our lives. And the redeeming grace. Oh, the redeeming grace. Not only for us, for the whole world. And whosoever believeth in him. Oh, the redeeming grace. From eternity, from, from generation to generation till Christ returns. The redeeming grace of our Lord is, fro is flowing freely. Oh, we just, we can jump into this river of life. We can just, just jump into the river of grace. And let us not go out of this place without Christ in our lives. And rededicating our lives where he could come down, where he could step down to this earth. So that, he, that we could be redeemed back to the Father. And that is the purpose that he came. And Paul writes to Timothy in 1.15, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. It is not for a group of holy people. Even in yesterday's message, as Pastor Sherry was sharing, none of us are from the Jewish background here. But yet by grace. Oh, we were like olive shoots. Oh, like olive, wild olive shoots, we were outside. But God, by his grace, oh, by his divine love, he has engrafted us into himself. Oh, what a love. What an unimaginable love. Oh, it, every time that you think about this love and his grace, it never stops. And it has never stopped and it will never stop until each one of us, we start coming into the Lord Knowing him fully, knowing him into, in, into the, and growing into the very mature height of Christ. Knowing Jesus as a savior, as, as a healer, as a person, as a friend. Jesus 
we can we can call him as our friend he's not sitting there somewhere high above he stepped down he we can call him as our friend we can go to him whenever we need him we need not take appointments with him we can run to his arms of grace we can tell everything that is there in our hearts and every tear he wipes and every fear he takes it away because he's god and he has and he loved us so much that he came down and the father was pleased and that is the best part of it and the father was pleased oh to call us as his sons and through the redeeming grace and the act of our lord savior jesus christ we can stand and we can proclaim that the lord is good amen and as we celebrate this christmas as we have celebrated and since yesterday we in tlc we have been celebrating right and our choir and i was looking at the choir and 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 i felt the angels came they sang and they went but our choir is standing and singing again again from since yesterday evening it's singing and singing for what to proclaim this good news for a new set of people oh can we join along with the choir can we join along with the heavenly forces oh to proclaim the good news of our lord let not this good news be for ourselves today let us go and then the and I, that's this song has been troubling me like anything you know as i'm telling from the beginning you know it's so nice to sing that song go and sing and over the mountains it's so beautiful but now we don't have to run over the mountains i was just thinking of the mutla mountains that we have in kuwait if you have to run to the nearest mountain it is there but we need not go to the mountains now uh, and even as a shepherd's ran yeah it is a beautiful song to sing where where is our mountains where are we going tomorrow morning when we go back to our offices let that be our mountain tops to sing and to proclaim the good news of our lord and savior jesus amen will you do that to the church will you come to that place where we can proclaim jesus even the angels came and let us speak peace we are a people of peace the whole world recognizes us as a people of peace but peace inside peace with god peace with man oh what a wonderful thing to have all of this into our lives so if you can if you can dedicate your lives there is no better place than giving your life on a christmas day if you want to accept jesus as your personal savior if you have not at known if you if you feel that you are in in a hopeless situation if you feel that you are having fear today is the day jesus stands for you jesus is not a mythical guy jesus is not a person who came 2000 years plus and he went off no he still lives with us he is emmanuel he is god with us and he will be with us for eternity and we cannot lose this hope whatever may it may come second peter 1:4 again says uh, the writer is speaking about jesus by him we have been given exceedingly great and precious promises that through jesus you may be partakers of the divine nature not only this he 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 not only came but we can be partakers of his divine nature do you want that church we are not just standing aloof of god and you know just worshiping the lord lifting up our hands and blessing him and walking away no we are there to partake partaking of his divine nature oh peter 14 i want you to remember that when you go to home today as a christmas message as a christmas gift this is what i want to give it to you where we can desire for this gift partaking of the divine nature of christ into our lives so that we can start proclaiming the good news of our lord wherever we go it's not enough that we it's enough that we had been silent all these days right when we look back into our lives and the number of years that has been passed by i believe it's enough it's enough it's time the time is less oh the harvest is plenty and there's a great thing to be done 
and the great commission stands and and Jesus said i will be there with you towards the ends of the earth and i will be there with you all the days of our life he will be with us so can we give our lives unto the lord and can we take and can we desire for this gift of of life that is not in jesus christ and partaking of his divine nature that we will not no more be babes you no know, running around the balloons and and the lightings and and the decorations yes it's all nice but something more than that the divine nature of christ into our lives let's think tomorrow when i go which is my mountain where i will stand and i will sing of this glorious gospel where i will tell the others that jesus christ is born and will they see christ jesus born in our lives will our character our words the way we do things reflect jesus oh if it is not so it's okay today is a day of of grace we can tell lord sorry for we have not done it but today i want to give my life to you and i want to live for you i want to see jesus exalted and glorified in my life and i want to be like those angels are not going to come again angels are not going to come on the beach side again and proclaim that god jesus is born go to this church no yes it can happen but we god has ordained us god has called us each one of us to go and to sing and to proclaim and as you go to omar to your offices to our homes let us remember to proclaim christ amen hallelujah